Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the concept of a dead letter queue for your message bus or queuing system. Now, I've never actually worked ever in a production environment where we did not have a dead letter queue accompanying a main queue we're processing. So it is absolutely critical you know what it is and you know how to use it in your applications. Now, this video is sponsored by AWS, so I will be using AWS SQS to demonstrate this capability. However, if you're using Azure Service Bus or Google's whatever they call it, then the principles are the same. Even if you're using a non-prem thing you're running in your company, you can still use the same principles there. So this video is for you. Now, services like SQS, the thing we're gonna see, are extremely cheap on the cloud, but if you wanna get some free credits from AWS to play around with other things, there's a link in the description down below to sign up and AWS will give you $50 worth of credit for free. If you like a lot of content and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe and the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsters.com. Now, it's worth pointing out that I already have a video on SQS and I go in depth on how to implement a publisher and a consumer. And I'm going to do a small recap in this video. However, I highly recommend you check that video first if you don't know what a message bus is or a queue is, and then come back here. All right, so quick recap. So what we have is, let's say, service A over here and then service B over here. These services do not need to have synchronous communication. This type of communication can be very, very problematic for reasons I covered in that other video. So what we do is we introduce a message bus or a queue in the middle, and then service A will push a message here with information. Now imagine this message as literally a JSON blob. And then this message eventually will be picked up over here and then processed by this service. Now, this is all good and fine and it works and it scales and it introduces things like load leveling for our application. It's very, very, very nice. However, what happens when service B over here cannot process this message? This message can be financial information. It might be a medical record uh, reference. It can be so, so many important things. So what happens when trying to process something like this goes boom. Well, this is where the dead letter queue comes in. The concept is very, very simple. All it really is, is just another queue similar to this one over here, but it sits basically in parallel. And the way it works is that when B tries to process this message, but it goes boom, then if it goes boom enough times, because you don't want to do this the first time it fails, because it might be an issue, like a transient issue, like a database connection was a bit flaky or some service you're calling, something that, you know, the next time I process this, this will work. So you don't do it for once, but maybe after three times or after five times on the same message, you want to say, you know what, this thing can be processed. I need to move on with my life. I need to start processing other things. So what you do is you take this message over here and actually you don't do anything. This is all automated by the queue itself, the original queue. And you just put it in here. So this now is put into a separate queue and this main queue over here can just keep processing. So let's recap the flow. Messages over here being published by A. It's in the queue and the message bus goes here. B can't process this, so it fails, let's say, once. It goes back here. Then it's being processed again, twice, three times. Okay, three is the threshold, and this queue knows that if I try to send something three times and you can't process it, then I'm going to send it into the dead letter queue, and now it is put here. And now here, usually nothing processes this thing. Usually what you have is alerting. So you would alert that, yeah, something was put into the dead letter queue, and then this is where a human would come in and try to see, okay, let me go in there and see usually manually what happened. Then you're going to get the message, see the body, and then maybe do some debugging locally, trying to see why this message cannot be processed by service B. That's usually the flow. Now, you can go even crazier and automate a lot of that and have another service that processes messages. But the fundamental concept is this. And it is absolutely crucial because we cannot afford to lose that type of data. Now, let's see all that in the code. So what I have here is the same code, sort of, that I had in my previous SQS video, where we have a consumer that is 
consuming messages from a queue that is publishing messages into a queue. Now the queue is called customers in this case. And what I'm pushing in is just this customer created object, very simplistic, very uh, straightforward. And then I have a deleted as well. Now at this point, I have no queues. I went ahead and I deleted them. So I'm gonna go ahead and recreate them so I can show you the flow in each step. So I'm in the AWS console home and I'm gonna search for SQS, simple queue service. And then I'm gonna say create queue or you can go into queues here and say create queue here. So I have nothing and I'm gonna go ahead and create a standard queue. You can also have a first in, first out delivery sort of queue, but I'm gonna go with the standard, which guarantees at least once delivery and best effort ordering. These sort of guarantees, by the way, will affect your throughput. So you have to be very smart choosing them. Maybe a topic for another video. And I'm gonna call the queue customers. And then you have a bunch of configuration here. I'm gonna leave everything here as default. The only thing I'm actually going to change is the visibility timeout, which is the time that someone has to take a message and process it before SQS goes, hey, you had enough time with this, you're probably stuck. I'm gonna take that back and then have someone else try to process this. And I'm gonna change that to 10 seconds just so I can simplify the flow of this video. So then here, I'm gonna leave encryption on the access policy, everything will just stay on and I'm not gonna change anything else. I'm just gonna say create queue. And now I'm gonna go back to my code and I'm gonna run my consumer. And again, the consumer is listening for messages in a specific location. In this case, it's the customer's queue. And then I'm gonna go into this publisher. And as you can see, what this will do is try to publish two messages. First is the customer created message, and then it is the customer deleted message with a five second delay. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and go to the original consumer service. So as you can see, both of them now have been processed. So they went into the queue and they've been pulled back by the consumer. Very straightforward flow. However, what happens if in my handler, for example, the created handler, I have a bug or an issue for now, I'm just gonna manufacture a fake problem. And I'm going to say, if customer created dot full name starts with Nick, then throw new exception, I hate Nick's something like this. Now, realistically, you wouldn't throw something like this. You would have something unexpected happen, but due to the nature of something unexpected, I'm going to just put this here just so I can show you what's going on. So in that case, what's going to happen is I'm going to go back to my program and remove the delete part. I'm going to run the consumer again. And if I run the consumer, here we go. I'm going to run the publisher now and let's see what happens. So it failed to process it with an exception. Now we're gonna wait because in this monitoring tab, you can see, in fact, I can go ahead and go back to the queues and refresh. And you can see that one message is still in flight and it will go at some point back. It's gonna be available. But if we give it 30 seconds, as you can see, it is trying to be reprocessed. In this case, one, two, three, four. And as you can see, this will just keep being attempted to be re-delivered and re-delivered and re-delivered and it just will never be processed. So this obviously is a message we cannot handle, but you don't want this to keep failing because it might be doing some work until it's failing and your service is occupied. Or you might have a first in, first out or five for queue and this thing is blocking it. So it's situations like this where dead letter queue comes in handy. And let's see how we can introduce it in our system. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the consumer and I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna try to poll for this message. As you can see, it was received 10 times, in this case, 12 times now. So this information just stays with the message alongside some other metadata and it keeps being received because I'm polling for it. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete it now. We don't want this. And we're gonna go ahead and introduce a dead letter Q because we want, if it fails three times, put it on the side and let me continue processing doing something else. So all I need to do to introduce a new dead letter queue is go ahead and create the queue first. So it is just another queue. So I'm gonna call that customers to, which is the same name as my main queue and then add a DL queue after a hyphen in the end. And I'm not gonna attach any of that. You might wanna increase the message retention maybe to 14 days. So for how long the message stays in the queue before it's deleted. The reason for that is because it's gonna take you some time to go back and do some analysis and you don't want that message to disappear. Ideally, as soon as something like this happens, you want an alert to be triggered to let you know that something bad happened and you go ahead and you take a look at what is going on. 
and then visibility timeout doesn't really matter we're gonna leave everything here the same and i'm not going to touch any of the access policies but here's where the interesting part comes in do you see this redrive allow policy this redriving it is effectively the ability of the dead letter queue to go ahead and republish the messages after you're done fixing the bug in your code to reprocess them from the main queue so i'm going to say yes enable that and i'm going to allow this to publish things into that main customer's queue and i'm just going to say create queue now the last thing i need to do is go to the customer's queue and configure a dead letter queue over here so currently we have nothing i'm going to go ahead and say edit and i'm going to say over here scroll down 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 i'm not going to touch redriving because redriving happens on a dead letter queue i'm going to just say dead letter queue enable and i'm going to choose that dead letter queue i created i can configure also max receives so how many times a message can be received before it is being forwarded to the dead letter queue i'm going to say three here just for brevity and i'm going to just save this and now as you can see no messages available and no messages in flight i'm going to go back to the code and i'm going to go ahead and run the consumer the exact same code on my end and actually i'm going to debug it because i'm going to do a live change so debugging now this thing over here it is running and i'm just going to run the publisher to publish this customer created message so debug as you can see failed to process it once now we're going to wait for it to be failed three times so once now it waits for 10 seconds it happens again now it's going to wait for another 10 seconds and it has now failed three times so one two three it will not fail anymore because the message is no longer in that queue let's take a look to see where it is so back to the portal and if i refresh this then as you can see now the message available is in the dead letter queue over here and at this point i can go ahead and i can do whatever i want i can pull for messages so i can take this and then say stop polling and say okay that's what the body was we're gonna take that body and all the attributes and everything and we're gonna try to recreate this failure either locally or i'm gonna use logs from the failure on the real system and try to see why it happened so this is where you come in and you investigate the issue but once you're done with this for example oh i found that this service over here is nick phobic so i went ahead and I fix this and I'm hot reloading now so the bug is no longer in the code then I can go in my dead letter queue and I can say start DLQ redrive and I can say redrive all that into the queue now you can configure how you want this to be redrived for example it's going to redrive it now in a source queue but you can also configure a custom queue so maybe you have another queue where you only process dead letter queue items or maybe because you want to test your bug fix and you don't want to just put it in production immediately you have a new version of that service running on a separate queue which has the same properties as the main one and then you redirect it there to see if it could process things correctly in this case we're going to do source but you can be very flexible with this and then you have this setting over here velocity control settings this is very very interesting because imagine you have a failure that causes 20,000 or 100,000 messages to go to the dead letter queue. If you trigger a redrive in a system that normally processes 20 messages a second, you might have a big issue with scaling this application. So this will actually allow you to configure the velocity and say, only send 20 messages per second because I wanna stagger how I wanna process those messages. In this case, again, it doesn't matter, but it's very nice that we have this setting. It is absolutely crucial for some systems. So I'm gonna say system optimized and just say DLQ redrive. And now if I go back to my service, which is still running by the way, you can see the message has been processed properly. And that's because of the redrive. So it went from the dead letter queue into the main queue and then it was processed. So this is the flow and this is the concept and the idea. SQS makes it extremely easy and as you can see you have all the tools you need to streamline having something like this in your system i always recommend managed queues over the ones you're self-hosting so if you can run something like this even if it's not aws i highly recommend it but what do you think do you learn something you didn't know do you think something like this is very easy to implement leave a comment down below and let me know well that's all i have for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreon for making this just possible if you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe more, click the like, and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.